Hey, all right. Welcome back to the Rocco Taco Mining Channel. How are you doing today? So in today's video, I'm going to talk about something, a new term I've heard. I saw this article. I said, this is a new term. They named it. It's called crypto jacking. It sounds like a uh, kind of a new movie, new action movie called crypto jacking. You know, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's find out what's going on, what this is, what people are doing, and how to how to recognize it. So as uh, as people watching these videos, they're mostly crypto miners, hopefully, uh, CPU miners, GPU miners. We uh, set up our own PCs, our own rigs. We set up the miners. We configure them. We build workstations. Blah blah blah. We know all the techs and ins, ins and outs. But even do we know that maybe we are also being hijacked and people are running malware on our business machines, our um, editing machines, our gaming machines? Sometimes you just may not think to notice, but uh, this article will talk about some of that stuff. And take that and then add that to normies who don't know anything about this and how prevalent and pervasive, is that the right word? This can become where uh, these crypto jackers are utilizing all these PCs through malware and app to mine crypto to their wallets. Uh, even for C, uh, miners themselves, you download a miner, just inadvertently you don't change the wallet address that's defaulted in some of these miner scripts. That's not crypto jacking, but it just shows you you're mining, but it's going to someone else's wallet, either the devs or whatever. And that's on you because you have to change the uh, wallet to your wallet per the instructions. But that's just kind of an inadvertent way. The way these article, this article is talking about is uh, the crypto jacker. Uh, I just love that term, man. Starring Samuel Jackson. It's like a cool action movie coming out. Uh, let's go on. There's a need to mind. Uh, basically, how else can these um, hackers make money? You know, instead of doing it the honest way, buying equipment, setting it up, why not just utilize other people's stuff out there? And that's what they're doing. Uh, the latest news, as I put in another video, is the Raptorium hack where a bunch of uh, hackers commandeered some high-end heavy metal HP servers. And they were mining, of all things, Raptorium. That was December 9th through December 16th, I, I believe. The Raptorium hash rate doubled. Uh, the price, I think, stayed the same. Difficulty jacked up. They uh, were found out a little bit. Uh, then the uh, price kind of started to tank, hash rate tanked. Uh, but they made out with like uh, over 100000 bucks after cashing out a Raptorium. Uh, the issue now is some of those servers are still mining for them. They haven't got them all. So it's kind of interesting. It's they have it's like a virus, man. They have spread out to all the servers they could, and they haven't been detected on all of them. But they know their stuff is still mining Raptorium. The other story was a government person uh, was mining on government servers at work. He put on some government uh, some crypto mining software, made about twenty thousand bucks. I guess got found out by one of the few government people that actually work. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, he got busted for, uh, you know, using these servers for personal gain. And number two, most of these government servers are in secure rooms in that. So he probably, too, was uh, busted for violating security protocol. You uh, probably most likely not fired because in the government, if you are a civil servant at GS, it is next to impossible to get fired for doing anything you can commit any crime or anything, and as long as they know about it, they're all right with it. That's from my personal experience working with government people. So if you want a job from cradle to grave without having to worry about working or um, doing anything and just riding out your life, you know, leaving in a body bag, just go become a federal government employee. Cha-ching! I mean, that's the white-collar welfare. That's what we called it, the white-collar welfare of the government employee. Yeah, you should see some of these jokers, man. Woo! You want to talk about a little Napoleon syndrome, go work with some government people. They, yeah. Oh. All right. Sorry. I got off on a tangent. I was having a PTSD having worked with some of those people. Terrible people. Terrible. And if you're one of them, get out. Save your soul. All right. Let's go on. So that was a tangent. That's one of my tangents. I shouldn't rant like that. But again, you got to keep it real. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Now they're saying profitable 
Profitable crypto mining requires specialist rigs and, and even entire farms and machines. The hardware costs must be uh, recouped and the running costs permanently offset. So even then it isn't all free money. Yeah, we all know that honest crypto miners in this community, we know that you got to pay for electricity. You got to get your ROI back on your equipment, your time and money uh, to get this stuff up and running and maintaining it. It's it's the honest way is a difficult way. And it's but, you know, that's why these people are trying to circumvent it and use your machines, your electricity to mine for free. You know, yeah, unless let's go back through this. Unless, of course, you're using here. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're using someone else's computing resources to perform your mining. Using someone else's IT resources without permission is a crime. Where's that dog, that crime dog? What was his name? I forget. It's okay. They should have that, they should have that cyber jacking logo. Who can be the mascot? You got to get a mascot for the, uh, oh, who's that crime dog? I forget. If you know, post it below. Remember that crime dog will come on? It's, it's a crime. Uh, but that's no deterrent to cyber criminals. So yeah, so no, it's out there, but they need to get a little logo of anti-crime stuff, but I don't know. But it seems like these days they're just, it's lawlessness in this whole world right now, but who knows what's going on. Um, let's see, using phishing attacks or infected websites, they can easily install crypto mining malware without your knowledge. And they can poach your electrical power and your CPU cycles and GPU if, if they know that you're running a gaming machine, they can get in there and run up, run up, you know, the resources and say, "Oh my God, this guy's got a 3080 Ti graphics card too, and a, and, and a Ryzen 9 on this machine. I'm gonna run two scripts. I'm gonna run a CPU miner and a GPU miner, and, they, and, and do that. They can do that, I guess. That's what this whole article is about. Oh my God! Another way they can crypto mine in your dime is to infect websites." so that visitors' browsers join a crypto mining pool and run drop JavaScript crypto mining scripts. Whether method, uh, whichever method the threat actors employ, it's called crypto jacking. They should, have, they should have done this better. They should have bolded and capitalized that, crypto jacking. I love that term. And it lets them make a profit while you face higher utility bills and reduce performance. Boy, oh boy, I saw this article went, you kind of knew stuff out there existed. You read the articles and that, but then you start reading the people are writing about write about it more. It's it's a problem. So this article is kind of good in that it brings awareness to it. But most normies have no idea. Most businesses have no idea about this stuff. Um, if they have good good IT people, they should be able to spot it. Uh, even at home, it's hard to know this stuff because most people just put their computers in the corner and forget about it. All right, because they try to compromise as many computers as possible across as many organizations as possible, their pool of uh, computers becomes large and powerful. The crypto jacking ecosphere, right? I don't know. That power means they can uh, materially contribute to the mining processes and get rewarded. Okay, let's go down to here, how to spot crypto mining. Let's go to this, let's just get right to the juice. You guys get the point. Crypto jacking is a thing. We're seeing it more and more and it's becoming profitable for the criminals. Oh, let's see, what does this say? If you or your users notice a drop, a drop in performance of computers or servers, and those machines have a constant high CPU load and fan activity, that might be an indication that uh, crypto jacking is taking place. Uh, crypto jacking, they missed the point here. There's also GPUs and uh, that's gonna be a little tougher probably unless you hear your fans always winding up and running hot. The CPUs will run hot. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to spot, but performance wise is, is one of the key indicators. But your computer can still run performance okay if you're doing GPU mining. But if you're trying to do video games in that, yeah, you're going to notice it. it's like, why is this game not working out? And then maybe you're being crypto jacked. You don't know. You got to check. All right. Sometimes poorly, uh, poorly written and badly tested operating system or application patches can have adverse effects that share the same symptoms. Exactly. You don't know if it's 
a lot of crap extensions you downloaded to your browser, a lot of applications you put on your system, stuff isn't jiving well with Windows Update, which is always a problem. Drivers are incompatible with these latest Windows 10 updates or 11, and that may be the problem as well. So it, it's almost what is going on with my PC, and crypto jacking isn't going to be the first thing that comes to anyone's mind, most likely. Maybe people that know about it will say, oh, let me just check, see what's running. I don't know. But if you're seeing a sudden widespread number of affected computers and there haven't been any scheduled patches rolled out, it's likely to be crypto jacking. Yeah, got to watch out for that crypto jacking. All right, let's see what else is going on. OK, then here's here's the other point, too. They can go in and crank and then run. And then if, if someone's halfway savvy, they're going to say, why is my PC overloading? And that's going to give them, that's going to tip their hand. That's going to give it away that, hey, something's on this machine running out of control. So anyway, some of the smarter crypto jacking software limits its CPU load when it notices a certain threshold of legitimate user activity. So I think they get on there and say, oh, the guy's playing a game. The guy's actually on there, on there doing programming or using visual code or, or he's actually using Excel spreadsheet. There's actually active user engagement on this uh, server, workstation, PC, laptop, whatever. So then they can probably throttle what they're doing and you know, scale it down. That's pretty smart if they can do that. All right. This makes it harder to spot, but it also introduces a new indicator. If the CPU and fans go higher when nothing or very little is happening on the computer, the exact opposite of what you expect, then it's likely to be crypto jacking. Yeah, if you're out there doing a lot of web stuff, watching videos and that, your fans are gonna spin up. Uh, even some of the uh, plugins, extensions, to monitor uh, crypto or stocks or uh, anything with a lot of graphics involved, it's gonna hit your graphics card and cause your fans to spin. Uh, even uh, running stuff in the background, the background, the backup stuff, the backup stuff like um, a time machine on your Mac, when that thing kicks off, it's going to start chugging your CPU, kill your video performance. It's it becomes a hog. So you got to you got to be mindful of that. But there's ways to check it. Like for Mac, you bring up Activity Monitor, and you got to educate, edu educate yourself to see what's running. Like oh, what's this script? And like. Uh, I forget what Max is, Backup D or something, or there's a couple of demons that run. And then you've just got to say, oh, I have my backups running during my peak work time. No, don't do that. Running at 3 a.m. or something like that. Change that. All right. Crypto jacking software can also attempt to blend in by pretending to be a process that belongs to a legitimate application. They can use techniques such as DLL sideloading, where a malicious DLL replaces a legitimate DLL. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know about that. The DLL is called by a bone bona fide application when it launches or a doppelganger application that has been downloaded behind the scenes. Once it is called, the fraudulent DLL launches a crypto mining process. If the high CPU load is noticed and investigated, it appears that a legitimate application is misbehaving and perform, performing an adverse, in an adverse fashion. Okay, so they kind of mask themselves. That's pretty interesting too. Uh, with, uh, with such measures being taken by the malware authors, how can you recognize crypto jacking for what it is and not mistake it as an errant but normal application? One way is to review the logs from a network devices such as firewalls, DNS servers, and proxy servers and look for connections to known crypto mining pools, obtain lists of connections that crypto miners use, and block them. For example, these patterns will block the majority of Monero crypto mining pools. XMR, pool.com, pool.org, pool. Interesting. The, uh, the adverse of this uh, tactic is to limit your external connections to known good endpoints, but with a cloud-centric infrastructure that is significantly harder. It's not impossible. It will require constant review and maintenance to make sure legitimate assets are not blocked. That's the whole thing. Most people don't have the time and effort to do this. Uh, they're just going to say, oh, this thing's hot and the fans are running. What's going on? Oh, well, I got to go to lunch. Anyway, let's say cloud providers can make changes that impact how they are seen from the outside world. Microsoft heavily maintain a list of all the Azure IP address ranges, uh, which it updates weekly. Not all cloud providers are so organized or considered. Yeah, they don't care. 
Blocking crypto mining. Most popular browsers support extensions that can block crypto mining in the web browser. Some ad blockers have the ability to detect and stop JavaScript crypto mining processes from executing. Interesting. I need to look into that more. I need to get to make sure I'm using the Brave browser. And I think Brave should protect me. I'm going to go check my security levels on that. Uh, let's see. Microsoft experiment with a new feature. I don't care about Edge. No, who uses Edge? I don't use Edge. I think I use Edge for five seconds when I install Windows. And so I can download Chrome. I quickly delete Edge. That's about my extent of using Edge. So, so suck it, Bill Gates. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, I'm not going to read any more about Edge. I don't care. As usual. I like that. As usual. Dot, dot, dot. Prevention is better than cure. Good cyber hygiene starts with education. Oh my God, all these terms. We got crypto jacking. Now we need uh, cyber hygiene. Oh my God. All right. Good cyber hygiene starts with education. Make sure your staff can recognize typical phising. Uh, is it phising or phishing? It's phishing, right? When, I don't know. They're, I don't, who knows? It's like niche versus niche. I don't know. Phising attack techniques and telltale signs. Make sure they feel comfortable raising concerns and encourage them to report suspicious communications, attachments, or system behaviors. Yeah, you never cl click on a link in an email, folks. Don't do that. It might download something. Uh, always use two-factor or multi-factor authentication. When available. Yeah, it's not that hard. Just get used to doing it, even though those can be hacked as well. So nothing is foolproof. Uh, let's see. Anything else here? Then they talk about just other things. Um, privileges, stuff like that. Implement email filtering to block. Now, most normies aren't going to do this. This is for network systems and businesses. And I think talking about check your firewall, proxy and DNS logs and look for inexplicable connections. Um, how are you going to know that? Again, if you're normie and they're coming to a lot of normie servers out there, no one's get, ah, come on. These guys are going to know it. This is for IT folks. Automated tools can help with this. Block access to no crypto mining pools. Prevent the atomic execution of macros and installation processes. All right. And that is it. Oh, zero comments. See, that's my point. If this was really a concern to people or people even knew about this or had, there'd be some comments here. All of the article is probably new, but still, it's just the guy picked up on a niche topic and it's actually happening out there. I will go out and check my browser security. I'm going to double check. I didn't know about the uh, JavaScript poll thing right, right here. That's something for me to check into. Um, I know my Mac's been chugging and I keep watching Activity Monitor and it's mostly the uh, time machine backup uh, daemon running. So that's because I've been up late working and I go, that's usually when the back off script kicks in. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I've seen. Network stuff, but uh, I have checked the logs. I saw someone trying to connect to my Mac once and I might have been through um, what is that? Apple share. Oh, I'm going to find it in a sec. What is that? Yeah, whatever. Uh, that comes up and recognizes your PC or your Mac and they say, Oh, I'm going to connect that, but they don't have permission. So I think someone inadvertently did that, but it freaked me out. And that's when I went to my uh, router logs and said, who tried to connect to my MacBook?" And, you know, but then I turned off the Wi-Fi and kept it on the cat five. Um, the, uh, wired connection just to limit down any Wi-Fi if something if someone picked up my Wi-Fi. There's also a way to go in your router and not broadcast your Wi-Fi uh, ID so they don't bring up your phone and say, oh, look at that Wi-Fi. Even though it's protected, I can see this guy's Wi-Fi. There's ways to block that. You just say, do not broad do not televise or do not broadcast the, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi name to the public. Well, that's it. I thought this was an interesting article. Crypto jacking, be prepared, have good hygiene, monitor your systems. Basically normal stuff for a malware is just, just keep a, if you first indicator, if your fans are spinning more than usual and it's hot when there is no activity, when you're just kind of just sitting there going, why is this laptop or this workstation how to control? Why is this thing hot? And uh, then start checking. Um, typically check your browser security levels. Don't have it wide open. And uh, that's all I can think of. And most people don't know to go in to um, Task Manager and look at stuff. Most people don't know to go into MacBook Activity Monitor and see what's running. They don't know what they're looking at. So this is almost this is almost 
prevalent everywhere. You got to admit it's got to it's got to be running everywhere because uh, hardware is expensive for crypto mining. Electricity is expensive in some places, and they don't want to pay any of this. They just want to use your servers and mine crypto. All right, that's all I got. I thought it was kind of an interesting article. What do you think? What are your tips for blocking? or checking for people are hacking in your machines, it's kind of difficult. I mean, you really got to be on it. You got to make sure stuff is set up correctly. Your firewalls, don't drop all, all, um, all, uh, what do you call it? All the security measures on your windows either. I got to double check mine because I know when I install stuff, when you're installing mining software, the browsers complain because there's an exe or something inside the zip file and they hate that. But you override it and make it download. Um, so I got to double check all that stuff and I think I'm good to go, but I'll do a, a pass over on that and make sure all is set accordingly. Highest level is sometimes good. Like I even turn off stuff on location. I don't want location tips. I don't want cookies. I flush cookies at the end of each session. Uh, what else I do? Security's high. I don't mind. So there, I don't mind those extra settings. If it's going to make it more difficult for someone, they'll move on to someone a little more easier to hit. All right, that's all I got. So beware of crypto jacking and uh, have that good hygiene, that good crypto hygiene. <laughs> all right, that was an interesting article. Take care. I'm out. It's snowing. It's snowing. I'm in Idaho in December. What's wrong with me? It's snowing. <laughs> yeah, it's gone, gone playing the snow. All right, I'm going to go. Take care, guys. If you like this, man, just give me a thumbs up. It's kind of fun, fun article, fun video. What do you, I mean, what are you going to do? Just got to be mindful of this stuff. Uh, and we'll go forth and make more videos. All right, take care. I am out. Dun, 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 dun. Time to go out and play in the snow. And stop, guys. Stop recording. All right, take care, guys. I'm out.